What is up guys? Welcome back to episode 2 of the 2018 through 2023 RMZ 450 Pro Circuit TIE 6 TIE Taint. Oh my god, it's a mouthful. What's up guys? Welcome back to episode 2 of the Pro Circuit Pipe Test for all 2018 through 2023 Suzuki RMZ 450s. My name is Charles, owner of MX Revival and MXRevival.com. And this episode will conclude our pipe test and whether or not we found any significant power changes or weight loss. You guys are not going to believe the weight loss results. I was honestly shocked myself. And as for the cool factor mentioned in episode one, I think it goes without saying that an aftermarket pipe usually looks a lot better than a stock unit. So if you guys missed episode one, I will not only leave it down in the description below for you, but it'll also be in the playlist at the end of this video. I took the Pro Circuit TIE 6 unit, weighed it in its entirety. I wanted to get a baseline weight before we went out to the track and did a pipe swap and test. I also went ahead and showed you guys how to blue your exhaust. I didn't do a very good job, but I did get a professional to help me do that on the phone. So check that out if you guys want to try to torch your exhaust and get the colors to change throughout the tubing. It's actually really cool, and I'm sure with a little bit of practice I could become much better at it. At any rate, go ahead and check that out when you have some free time. And so I think that's enough rambling for now. Why don't we head out to Skyline MX Park and Event Center in Boise, Idaho, and get this Pro Circuit pipe test underway. We're gonna ride the stock unit back to back with the Pro Circuit unit. When we get back from the track test, we're gonna take the stock pipe, throw all of that on the scale, and see just how much weight we lost. So enjoy, guys. I think my Suzuki brothers are really going to dig this one. All right, guys, we have arrived. Time to get this test underway. Another good turnout. Bike's looking good. Nobody goes out and does a pipe test without putting a new tire on, right? Let's check this thing out in the sun. Yeah, it's still ugly. <laughs> so yeah, there it is, guys. Today we'll be testing this thing out. I'm gonna go ahead and get geared up, get warmed up, get the squid knocked off of me, feel out this baseline again for the stock pipe, and then uh, we'll go ahead and install this together, and then we'll go and ride it together. All right, guys, I got a few practice laps in. Track is perfect. I'll pick you up like this once in a while so you can hear me really windy out. And uh, we're gonna take the stock pipe out real quick and focus on a few key spots uh, like coming out of turns uh, things like that how does the power feel with the stock unit sound all of it so let's go guys the track is so good right now the ruts are amazing it's just really windy as always that switch back when I come out of it it's a little bumpy so it's hard to be smooth but the torque the bike makes with this pipe is pretty robust like it's very punchy so it kind of it kind of adds to the experience of being less smooth um, for me at least so when the pipes are really grunty and tuggy uh, and then the turn is also kind of beat up already it makes it hard to stay smooth so I'm gonna pay attention to that versus the pro circuit, let's say, in the same area. So when I go through a turn and pull off the track, I'll probably talk about it because it'll be something I kind of want to pay attention to. So hopefully this video isn't unbearable. It's very windy out here and uh, I don't have the camera on my mouth guard anymore. So it's very hard to talk to you without stopping, but let's have some fun. Ooh. Mm -hmm. 
like that inside turn right there before the triple in. It's still pretty smooth. The bike hooks up and pulls nice and hard. Feels real good. So like definitely good torque out of this bike. I should mention I'm also using the lean coupler, which uh, is even more punchy than the stock one. So. I need to be smoother like that guy. No, no jittering, just arc through the corner. I should have put a new rear tire on a long time ago. I'm over jumping everything. This thing is hooking up like crazy. So aside from having the caffeine jitters and uh, doing very notchy things on the track, I need to chill out. Um, I really like the power this pipe makes with the stock coupler or the uh, lean coupler. It doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's got good torque off the bottom. It kind of has the same uh, power build all the way through till sign off. And it has a pretty good over rev. So all in all, the pipe is really good. It sounds good. It works really well. So I think it's a great stock pipe. Oh man, so much fun. I think it's time to uh, cool off, take a drink and then put the old tie six on there. Man, I'm excited to see if I can tell a difference with this thing. All right, so this thing's cooled off enough to install this pipe. We're gonna go ahead and pull it apart real quick. Super easy job. You only need a couple tools, uh, number 10, uh, eight. I don't think you even need a 12, but I got one just in case, I don't remember. Um, and a T-handle, number six for the head pipe Allen. So let's just pull it apart, swap this thing out. Yeah, it looks like you don't even need a 12. They're both 10s. And also the coupler is a, or the clamp is a 10. So pretty easy. One, two, three. And that's pretty much done.
piece it looks a lot nicer that's for sure so head pipe just need the number six i'm gonna go ahead and bust the bottom one loose it's hard to get the uh number six up top to reach the other one of these because the radiator's a little bit in the way so i figure if i loosen the bottom one then i can use the t-handle on the top yeah that worked out really well so now i just want to remember where that was so basically the bottom one or the top one was bottomed out so i can reset that top one first with the t-handle then tighten the lower be pretty simple And there's the two little Allen nuts. Head pipe comes right off. Yup, sure does. Now at this point in the install, some guys will put a new pipe on and they'll say, man, I fired it up and it's running all erratic. It's idling high, idling low. And sometimes that's because uh, they forget there's a copper gasket inside the cylinder head that mates up to the head pipe. And sometimes they fall out guys put their pipe in and then the bike ends up sucking air so you can usually get away with uh just running the one that's in there um I, that's the stock one it's only ever had the head pipe on it um, i bought a new one just because so we'll go ahead and pull that out just going to try and pry it out with a screwdriver if you're doing this with a screwdriver just be careful not to gouge the lip inside the cylinder head and there we go there's the old one yeah i, I probably could have reused it looks pretty you know looks normal looks fine Nothing wrong with a new one though. Slides back in there, holds itself really well. Let's go ahead and put on this uh, half-ass blued head pipe I got here. We'll go ahead and just put it on with the mid pipe too. Go ahead and get the mid pipe weaseled in there. Actually, I think that I have to put the mid pipe on after. It's kind of hitting the shock reservoir. So head pipe first. And then in the reverse of disassembly, we're gonna put that top nut back on first. Yeah, the pipe doesn't look all that bad once it's tucked into the bike. Can't tell how horrible a job I did blueing it. Go ahead and start the bottom one too, just to keep the flange stationary. And then we can go ahead and bottom out that top one. We'll go ahead and do a full tightening once we have the pipe all positioned so we can allow it to rotate a little bit still. Go ahead and do the mid pipe. Perfect. Leave everything loose until you're all the way on. Then you can go and do a final tighten on all these spots. And then the last step, you got your muffler. And then of course, we don't want to forget the little hook. This little uh, spring goes from the mid pipe to the canister. So, got that hooked on in the back. Got my little spring puller it's for my two stroke pipes. Works perfect for this. And there are a couple grooves in the titanium here where the spring actually rests. So you can't really put it in the wrong spot. There you go. Final step is to of course tighten everything. We're not gonna use the impact gun for that. And then this thing, straightens itself out at all the joints when you go ahead and put the final snug on all these parts actually guys i should start at the front and let that head pipe seat into that new gasket before i do the rear sections all right we got the top one pretty much bottomed and snugged it's going to impression itself into that uh, copper gasket there we go we got the lower and when you guys are done you'll notice the flange that holds the head pipe in it's just a little bit concaved or just a little bit flexed you don't want to overdo it but you'll notice it's got kind of a little bit of a, a u-shape to it very slight just past flat now we'll tighten up the mid pipe and the muffler and call it a day pop your number plate on and the rest is history Yeah, it looks real good, surprisingly. <laughs> All right, guys, let's recover the old heat. When we get back to the shop, we'll weigh this, but right now it's time to go ride, see if we can feel a difference, hear a difference, and when I start it, I'll hop off the bike and we'll see if we can watch the pipe re-blue any of the parts itself just from the engine's heat.
I made. I think it sounds quieter. Yeah, it's definitely quieter. the wind is whipping worse than ever so it's getting to the speeds of uh, being dangerous to jump anything but right off the bat I can tell the the pickup and power delivery is smoother and more mildly metered than the stock and that's why I mentioned earlier I was paying attention to the grunt of the stock pipe out of turns because I feel like this pipe might help mellow the bike down not in terms of losing power but applying it more in such a way that it's more usable so let's go see that let's see so it's definitely smoother the power is huh smoother off the bottom but stronger after that so it's like it ramps up more smoothly then kind of stays in the same power range uh, like the stop pipe like the stock pipe does uh, in terms of keeping the power moving more linearly, so that's good. So it comes on smoother, but it starts to hit and it pulls harder as it climbs than the stock one. So smoother down below, but more power, more consistently, more often as the RPMs climb. So let's do a little bit more riding and check this out. I can smell it burning. Let's see what it looks like. pretty much the same. Looks awesome. I did a good job on that. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Like that inside right there, I jumped that triple. I went into that so slow and not smooth in the rut and it still pulled really hard and got me to the triple mark on that. So that was nice. So the pipe, so far, it seems like it's gonna perform better overall.
like it a lot. It is smoother off the bottom, more powerful everywhere else, and it hooks up better. I don't feel like the wheel is spinning as much. And so overall, this is making the bike much more manageable and predictable at the same time. Not to mention if your wheel isn't spinning, your lap times are also probably getting shaved because you're more hooked up everywhere you're going. So this is a good pipe, man. I don't, I don't remember it being as good, like this good, the first time I used it a few years ago. So it's really nice to relive that. And on top of that, we still haven't even weighed it. So we're gonna probably lose weight on top of it being a better looking pipe and a better performing pipe. And this bike could really stand to lose some weight. So I can't wait to get back to the shop and uh, throw this on the scale and see how we did versus the stock one. Yeah, much much better pipe this thing is more consistent than stock feels really good can't wait to weigh it yeah it changed color a little bit it got more bronze kind of towards the back still looks pretty much the same as earlier though it kind of smoothed out all my crappy work so i'm excited about that it looks good all right guys, that wraps up the ride. It turned into like an insane, windy, it was just crazy. Like, it just, the wind is out of control. It's the worst I've ever seen it. Um, man, wow, anyways, I had a lot of fun. The pipe, look at that, it's like dust, and the flag is whipping. It's just gnarly. It really dried the track out. Anyways, uh, like I said, the pipe, is great i really like it it's better than the stock for sure i think when i had it on my 18 back in the day um, i probably didn't have as good a riding skill set not that it's phenomenal by any means now but i've definitely gotten better and i don't remember the pipe uh, having that big of a difference before today i really got a lot of good feedback out of it so um, i'm gonna go ahead and say already if you don't have one and you weren't sure uh, then definitely buy one it doesn't need to be titanium you can do uh, the stainless version as well. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, pipes in general of any brand, uh, two stroke, four stroke, just been really hard to get uh, with all the nonsense that's gone on the last couple of years. But if you get your hands on one, uh, that that's great. You'll love it, you will really love it. Um, again, just in case it was too windy on the track, uh, the power hit or the grunt right off the bottom on the pro circuit comes on smoother, has less probably bark but is immediately uh, more powerful right after that all the way through the range the over rev felt about similar um, I had the spark arrestor in the pipe the whole time um, I don't generally ride with them out uh, it's just something I like in there I feel like the power is a little better I should have taken that out for you guys sorry about that the track is just unbearable to ride though uh, at any rate the ride is done the pipe is great we're gonna go back to the shop and throw it on the scale, uh, the stock pipe. We're gonna put the stock pipe on the scale since we've previously weighed the Pro Circuit unit um, and see how much weight we gained or lost. It's gonna be a loss. Uh, so we'll check that out. We'll see what the total is and then uh, we'll kind of conclude this episode. So anyways, hope you enjoyed so far. I definitely have fun riding and making videos for you guys. That's a pretty awesome treat. So I'll see you at the shop, and as always, thanks for watching. All right, we are back in the hood, so it's time to throw this thing on the scale. It's got definitely more pieces than the Pro Circuit unit. Everything else is brought in, put away. Just one thing left to do. We got our super high-tech notepad down there with the Pro Circuit pipe weight. Got our scale out. Let's see how this goes. So the muffler by itself with the grommet in it, because that is an included part. The muffler by itself 
seven pounds, 3.2 ounces, is already heavier by more, well, not quite a pound. It's heavier than the entire Pro Circuit pipe by itself. That's pretty wild. I didn't remember that. So the muffler, seven pounds, 3.2 ounces. Okay, we'll set that aside. Then we have the head and mid pipe or one piece on the stalker. We got the flange, that guy there. And we got this uh, exhaust clamp, holds the muffler to the mid pipe. And then we have the mounting bolt for the rear. Two pounds, 1.4, 1.4, so six, 4.6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, nine pounds, 4.6 ounces for the entire stock setup. So nine, 4.6, and then the PC right here was six pounds, 14.8 ounces. So there's 16 ounces in a dry pound. It's almost seven pounds. So six, and then the 14, and the eight. So that would be two, and then that would be 10, and that would be so three, we shaved three pounds, 10.2 ounces. So not too far away from shaving four whole pounds off the bike. That's a huge amount of weight, almost four pounds, three pounds, 10.2 ounces. That's a, a massive, massive difference. Like I said, the muffler on the stock pipe was more than the entire pro circuit system just by itself. So that's insane. So we shaved some weight. We got some better looks for sure. We definitely got better performance. And then, uh, you know, the bluing in the end, <laughs> not, not so bad once you put it on the bike. It hides most of the shitty job I did. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Better pipe, better power, lighter, better looking, worth the money, absolutely. And one more thing, while we're on the topic of weight savings, we saved, I believe, over two pounds by swapping the rear tire. If you're using a 110, this is a 120, so that's not quite accurate. Let's say it shaved a pound, not quite sure. The engine mounts, I believe, saved about a pound over stock. So overall, this bike is down you know, a good bit of weight. Uh, let's see, so it'd be four, five, six. Let's say it's down six pounds from those mods. If you're running a 110, you're down closer to seven pounds. Seven pounds? is a ton of weight. That's a ton of weight to shave off a bike. Uh, it'd be, you know, best served below the springs. Anything below the springs is considered unsprung weight and therefore has a greater effect on handling when you shave weight. So things like tires, that's a big deal. The more weight you can get shaved below the suspension, so to speak, uh, is really, really good. But overall, man, if you're running a 110 uh, Dunlop, not a Bridgestone, Bridgestone's a heavy one, um, and the motor mounts and the pipe, you are down, man, about seven pounds. So big, big deal. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So guys, there you have it. Much better looks, much better performance, shaved a ton of weight and definitely a shit ton more style points. It's also common knowledge that style points add about 37 horsepower. How could you go wrong with that? I think the only downside of this pipe for some people is going to be the cost. They're a little bit over a thousand dollars if you can even get them right now. And as mentioned in episode one, you guys can reach out to me if you'd like. I'd be glad to do a stock check for you. We do carry these. It's just been kind of tough to get them, but still happy to help you get one. And you don't have to spring for the titanium carbon version either. You can actually get a stainless unit. You're not going to save as much weight, but you still could get a very similar pipe, definitely the same style of power for less than the titanium and carbon unit. So there are some options. So if you have any questions or comments for me, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to check out the website for all the other really cool mods like the engine mounts. Your support really helps out the channel tremendously and I sincerely appreciate you. Until next time, you guys can check out this playlist right here for all the other mods I've done to this bike, suspension, engine mounts, etc. Always back to back, always a real time test. And until next time guys, shred safe and I will see you soon.